Oh, DBX lab. I'm making giant azo churches. Oh, that sounds frightening. <laughs> um. Hello, everyone. Today we're going to be making a compound known as diazotetrazol. Now I hate this compound from the start, and you might wonder why I hate it already. Well, that's because I'm pre-recording, uh, well, I'm post-recording this clip. I've already made the video, I just haven't made the intro. And in the video, stuff happened that led to, uh... Uh, a little bit of diazotetrazole getting um, onto my lab bench, and uh, it's not a preferable situation. Um, and uh, I'm surprised it hasn't uh, happened yet, but it's micro detonating as I speak, and um, that's one reason I don't like diazotetrazole. Um, but we're still going to make it, or at least uh, I'm not anymore. Um, but you guys are going to see me make it. So um, the way we're going to do that is, uh, um, it's basically a diazination of, of 5-ATZ with hydrochloric acid. And um, uh, you start out mixing 5-ATZ with sodium hydroxide solution and adding sodium nitrite. And then you slowly, uh, once it's cooled off um, and taken to about like zero degrees Celsius, it's slowly dripped into an even colder solution of hydrochloric acid with ice in it. Um, now what could go wrong in the synthesis? I mean, you're making something with one carbon and uh, what, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I, I thought there were, I thought there were seven nitrogens on there. I don't know how I didn't count that correctly, but there's six six nitrogens on it, um, and nonetheless, it's very explosive. Um, it doesn't like to, ex there we go. There's a micro detonation. Um, very explosive. Don't make it. So here we have the two solutions. On the left, we have the hydrochloric acid in ice and on the right we have the 5-ATZ dissolved in a solution of uh, alkaline water, um, sodium hydroxide is dissolved in it, and um, sodium nitrite is also dissolved in there as well. Now we are keeping in mind that uh, we don't want an accidental detonation, uh, so the way we're going to try to prevent that is by uh, keeping both solutions very cool, um, uh, optimally, uh, optimally below zero degrees Celsius. That's kind of hard to do, especially when the hydrochloric acid is sitting in ice. But over here, I have a salt water solution that is cooling the, um, the other reagents. And uh, we will begin the additions now. So we are about halfway done the additions, and I'm beginning to notice a pale green color in uh, the solution that we're adding uh, the ATZ into, um, and I believe those are nitrosamines, so um, uh, I mean that's fun, but uh, we'll, we'll try to keep um, inhalation of these vapors to a minimum. I'm just about done the additions, and in the last few drops I did, I've noticed that there's a, a weird white precipitate that forms, and with the last of the solution, I'll see if I can make it reappear. And it might be hard to see, but at the very top of the solution, there's a sort of 
along with bubbles of um, evolving nitrous oxide gases. Well, not nitrous oxide, um, nitrogen dioxide and other nitrogen oxides. But there is a light white uh, precipitate that's currently in solution. Well, in the solution. I think that's our product. Um, I think that is... Uh, well, I don't think the, the white precipitate is our product. Um, I'm not really sure what that is. But I, I'm i pretty confident that uh, this solution now contains diazotetrazole. And um, from here, I think the plan is I'm going to um, convert that uh, to... Um, oh, I'm hearing some pops. I'm going to put on my headphones. If they get any louder than they are right now, I have a solution of sodium hydroxide to neutralize all that with. And that should convert all of the diazotetrazole to um, one of the more stable salts that I can work with later. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but that's definitely detonations in solution. You can't see, of course, it's not massive, but I'm hearing detonations from the solution. Miniature ones, but detonations nonetheless. I don't know if the camera is picking that up, so I'll move it closer. Okay, so I'm back. Um, it just detonated in solution, um, which is to be expected from this reaction. Uh, the reason it's all yellow is because as soon as it detonated, I poured all that sodium hydroxide I just showed, and it um, it popped a little bit more, but for the most part, it's turned into this yellow um, color. I can't really tell if it's a precipitate or not right now, but... Um, certainly scared the shit out of me, um, uh, pardon my French, but I did not expect it, uh, well, it wasn't loud, but, um, it did detonate in solution and, uh, with enough violence to take some out of the, the cup. Luckily, I was wearing my face mask, um, and even still, um, tiny little droplets, uh, went off in a couple directions and some hit the face mask, but that's showing you what you're working with um, when you're working with the tetrazoles. Uh, this stuff doesn't hold back. It It's one carbon versus seven nitrogens, and the nitrogens win uh, every time when you're working with azido, azide, azide, and uh, all these compounds. Um, but from here, um, hopefully I can scavenge what we have right here. I know we got our product, um, and, uh, if I'm gonna keep on working in this video, you'll see a clip following this. What we're left with now after that immediate neutralization is, um, a compound known as tetrazoleum, uh, cis diazotate, and, um, in the liquid form it's quite stable um i've tried putting on some foil and heating it to try to get it to detonate 
once it uh, crystallizes out. Um, and I wasn't able to get it to detonate, although in its dry state, if you do form crystals, it is, um, it will detonate. So we're not going to do that because we're going to try to save this solution outside um, for about a week uh, until I make more hydrazine sulfate. And at that point, we can make the uh, really crazy looking compound that I have right here. Gosh, that camera is right in front of the screen. The crazy looking compound right here. 55bis diazotetrazoleol hydrazine. And that is what we're going to make in the next video. From this, uh, we're going to turn it back into diazotetrazole. And um, from there, uh, it's a quick reaction to get to that compound. Um, that's where I'm going to stop working with diazotetrazole. Um, I don't want to work with this stuff anymore. Um, and that set, it, it just, a droplet of it just detonated on me. Um, not on me, but on the lab table. And um, the fact that I don't want to work with it says a lot, uh, judging on the fact that I've spent money to, been, uh, to be able to work with it. I mean, this stuff isn't cheap. And part of the reason I got it was to make these compounds. And there comes a point where um, it's not dangerous, but it's just um, psychologically disturbing to hear, uh, to hear that. I don't want to hear that in my lab, uh, on my lab table. So um, that's going to be the end of my working with diazotetrazole. After a little bit of thinking, um, I've calmed down a little bit, uh, done some soul searching, and uh, I've said to myself that if, if I get 150 subscribers uh, by the end of this year, I will make diazotetrazole again, and not just in the um, equilibrium uh, neutralization uh, sort that is required to make this compound. I will make diazotetrazole again um, if we reach 150 subscribers. Um, I mean, it's a growing channel, uh, 72 subscribers today, and uh, maybe we could get there in a week. Maybe Explosions and Fire could shout us out and um, uh, send me and Reactive Chem to the big leagues. I mean, you never know. So uh, I'll just leave it at that. We'll try to... Um, uh, we'll try to move on with the synthesis in the next video, and uh, you guys um, have a nice day, and don't make um, diazotetrazole.